Hey everybody, we're going to be making an artisan French bread um, that you can do really quickly and that you can enjoy it every day um, without a lot of preparation and kneading and stuff like that and it's the best. Uh, I've made it with a little bit more whole grain flour so it's more healthy. The original French bread recipe, well it didn't have all that much as far as the whole grains. It had uh, about five and a half cups of unbleached flour and uh, let's see half a cup of whole wheat, half a cup of rye flour. I bumped um, the others up to a cup, a cup and a half as far as the whole wheat and the rye flour to make it a little bit better and it's still just as tasty. It's actually tasty as far as I'm concerned. It's earthier and it's got this wonderful uh, crunch to the crust still because usually that's hard to obtain with whole wheat. You need to have uh, mostly all-purpose flour to do that. But um, anyway, here we are. So I pre-measured this stuff uh, with the exception of the rye flour over here. Um, I've got essentially uh, uh, it's a cup and a half of the whole wheat flour and uh, let's see, we've got four cups of the all-purpose flour. I try to use King Arthur's, it's unbleached, you know, it's a little bit better than the bleached stuff. And um, now we're going to add one cup of the rye flour, which I've got over here. See, here is my flowers, you can take a look. So we get about four cups of this, a cup and a half of whole wheat, and we're going to do one cup of rye flour. So let's do that now. Now let me show you the best way to measure the flour for something like this. Um, I have these measuring cups, I like them. Uh, nice and sturdy stainless steel. Uh, I have plastic ones too, but the plastic ones can break sometimes, a little flimsy, especially under the weight of flour. You want to take a straight knife and you want to level off the flour. So you push it off like this. And then it comes off nice and level. You just whisk it off. Add that to there. Okay, now that's ready as far as the flour. But what you want to do in the main bowl, which you're going to mix everything, just put the water, which really should be lukewarm, and it's going to have three cups of lukewarm water. I make it a little bit warmer than lukewarm, especially in the winter time. Yeast can take it. Um, yeast can survive in the hot tub. So, and that's pretty warm when you think about it. So it'll help it to rise a little bit more. There's one, two, and three. Perfect. And touch more. There we go. Okay. Right. So you have three cups of warm water. We have yeast. This is Flushman's instant dry yeast. And this requires one and a half tablespoons. So you just level it off like that. This is really easy. Dump it on in. And and a half. A little bit more isn't so bad. Makes it the bread a little bit poofier. It's no big deal. So we'll get rid of that. Salt. That's the, uh, the only ingredient we have missing is um, a teaspoon and a half of salt as well. So, and kosher salt or sea salt. I splashed myself with that. Okay, here's another half. All right. All the liquid ingredients are in here. And what we're going to do is put it in the KitchenAid. I really highly recommend these KitchenAids. You can do a lot with them, um, with especially baking. Um, they're, they're, you can do it by hand, but uh, this takes a lot of the uh, work out of it. This is just your standard artisan. All right, now I'm gonna put this in over here, very gently so it doesn't splash all over the place. It's all the flour. Okay, folks, how easy is this so far? Very easy. I'm going to put it on low because you don't want the flour to go fluffing all over the place and splashing you. And now I'm going to bump it up one notch. And we're going to let it sit there for, I'd say, about maybe a minute and a half. It really doesn't have to do much. Just have to incorporate all of the uh, liquid with the dough so that it's a nice ball. So we're going to let that do that. Uh, for just a couple of minutes, and then I'll show you what to do with it after. Go. All right, so it's already mixed. The beauty of these KitchenAids, fantastic. And the dough has got this nice feeling to it. It's kind of stretchy. It's a little sticky, not too sticky. That's when you know you got it right. It's it's not too wet. See, it kind of stays in one ball like this, and it's a little bit warm, so it's perfect. I'm going to transfer this to a large bowl. Follow me. There's the large bowl. That's all we're going to do, folks. Now, we're going to cover it. You want to cover it so that it's not airtight, but cover it so that drafts don't come in. 
and it's going to sit there for two hours. After two hours, you can start breaking your bread. You want to cut off a little piece of it about the size of a grapefruit and um, then you can bake boules or you can elongate them, make any shape you want from that point, but you can keep it in the fridge. And uh, so you have this for, you know, all week and um, you can make a fresh bread every day. All you have to do is let it sit out for about 20 minutes while the oven is uh, heating, but I'll go through that tomorrow. Tonight, I'm just gonna let this sit for about, like I said, two hours, and I'm gonna cook a, uh, a bread tomorrow. After two hours, I'm gonna put it in the fridge, essentially, so that it'll be ready to do whatever I want uh, the next day or the next week. It's actually good for two weeks in the refrigerator this way, so. So, we just kinda cover it up over here. Once again, doesn't have to be airtight. It should be airtight because there's gonna be some air exchange from the yeast. It's gonna be bubbling and whatnot. So let's put one like this, one like this, okay. All right, two hours, here we go. Now in two hours I can bake a bread, but once again, I'm not gonna do that tonight, it'll be tomorrow morning. After two hours, I'm just gonna put it in the fridge, and then uh, I'll show you what we're gonna do tomorrow morning with this, and we're gonna make some unbelievable bread. But so far, wasn't this easy? And this was the hard part, so, aha. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, and it's the next morning. And here we are, preparing our bread to go into the oven. And what you want to do is take it out of the bowl and dust it off with flour. And the bottoms and the sides as well. Now you can take it and you can uh, use a serrated knife to cut a piece or you can break it in two. Um, I already took two pieces off and I formed those. And basically you're going to take it and stretch it out a bit and then fold it under like this and it's kind of doing a mini kneading but that's it I'm pretty much done and we're going to be putting it on the pizza peel but before you do that so it doesn't stick you want to throw in a little cornmeal and then just put it right on top there now the oven's been heating so uh, what I'm going to do is throw some flour on here and I'm going to score it you can score it with all different kind of patterns I like to do something like a, a, a seashell pattern over here. And you can do a crisscross. You can do a cross. You can get inventive. And then once that bakes, it's going to open up and you'll see that. Okay. The oven is at uh, 450 degrees. And we're going to slide these in. To your stone. All right, so I'm going to take out the breads that I've been cooking over here, and it's a little hot. Asbestos fingers. You could use a little towel, that might be the smart way to do it. But I'm going to put in a fresh bread over here. I'm just going to slide it in. And again, it's at 450. It's going to cook for about 35 minutes. And I'm going to put in some hot water. And the hot water is going to go into a pan that's existing in there, heating up while the oven was heating, and it makes steam. The steam makes the crust, so you have to have that. So that's going to stay in there for about, like I said, 30, 35 minutes, depending on the size of the bread. But look at what we have here. It looks good enough to eat. What do you think?